Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth from MyHeap.com and welcome to Episode 2 of CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode, I'll be talking about the Linux CNC controller, including its features, where to get Linux CNC, creating bootable media, and additional resources that are available to you that will help you on your journey to learn about this powerful open source controller software. Please keep in mind that I am myself a home hobbyist and neither a machinist, a teacher, nor an engineer. This series is intended to share the things that I've learned and gleaned over the last few years from a home hobbyist viewpoint that I hope will help others who find themselves in the same position I was in. Since 2006, I've built two CNC routers from designs that are available for download or purchase from the internet. My hope is that I can help others to avoid some of the many pitfalls I found myself in during that time. So let's get started. In this short discussion about the Linux CNC controller, I will start with an overview of the features that Linux CNC has to offer. This list was taken from the Linux CNC 2.7 documentation. Linux CNC, the Enhanced Machine Controller, is a software system for computer control of machine tools such as milling machines and lathes, robots such as Puma and Scaris, and other computer control machines up to 9 axis. Linux CNC is free software with open source code. Current versions of Linux CNC are entirely licensed under the GNU General Public License and Lesser GNU General Public License, collectively called GPL and LGPL. This means that you can download the software and its source code and make any changes that you see uh, fit to it, you know, any changes that you'd like to make. Uh, most people, however, will probably just use the software as it's, a, a, as it's a supplied. Linux CNC provides quite a bit. It uh, provides a graphical user interface, actually several interfaces, including the Axis GUI, uh, which is the oldest and most developed interface, uh, GMO CAPI GUI, which is designed for touch screens, and hopefully I said that one right, Touchy, that's another uh, touch screen GUI that can be used without a keyboard or a mouse, G Screen, it's a customizable touch screen GUI, Key Stick, uh, you know, for a text only interface, and there are others. Linux CNC provides an interpreter for G code, and G code is an RS-274 machine tool programming language. And when you get into uh, CNC more, you'll uh, you'll get pretty intimate with this uh, with this language. Uh, it contains a real-time motion uh, planning system with look ahead, and it provides an operation of low-level machine electronics such as sensors and motor drivers. It has an easy-to-use breadboard layer for quickly creating unique configurations for your machine. Uh, it has a software programmable logic controller, or PLC, uh, that's programmable with ladder diagrams. And uh, Linux CNC provides an easy installation with a live CD. Now, Linux CNC does not provide any drawing, you know, CAD, Computer Aided Design, or G code generation from a drawing, uh, commonly called CAM, or C Computer Automated Manufacturing. Uh, it can simultaneously move up to nine axes and supports a variety of interfaces. The control can operate true servos, analog or pulse width modulated, and the feedback loops uh, closed by the Linux CNC software at the computer or open loops with uh, step servos or step motors. Motion control features include cutter radius and length uh, compensation, path uh, deviation limited to a specified tolerance, lathe threading, synchronized axis motion, adaptive feed rate, operator feed override, and constant velocity control. At uh, Linux CNC uh, has support for non-Cartesian motion systems. Uh, it's provided via custom uh, kinematic uh, kinematics modules. Right. The available architectures include hexapods, uh, like the Stewart platforms and similar concepts, and systems with rotary joints that provide motion, such as Puma and Scara robots. Uh, Linux CNC runs on Linux using real-time Linux extensions. That's important to know. Linux CNC can be downloaded from linuxcnc.org and clicking the download link at the top of the page. I should mention that there are a few different ways of downloading and running Linux CNC, but for the beginner, I would highly suggest that you download the live or install CD, or, or I just call the live install CD. This CD contains an installable Debian Wheezy system with real-time kernel extensions, okay? Included are Linux CNC, its documentation, and other applications to make your life easier using the system. The live install CD can be downloaded directly by clicking on the link on the download page or typing in the URL directly into your browser. 
the URL to download the ISEAL at the time of this presentation is linuxcnc.org slash linuxcnc-2.7-wheezy.iso. If you download the ISO at the time of this presentation is linuxcnc.org slash if you download the ISO using your browser, then it's a good idea to check the MD5 or the uh, SHA-256 sums, uh, you know, just to make sure that the file wasn't corrupted in the download process. Uh, if you're not familiar with MD5 or SHA sums, uh, please see the article at ubuntu.com slash community slash how to MD5 sum. But in a nutshell, when you run an MD5 or an SHA-256 uh, sum on a file, it calculates a unique number called a hash. Uh, the hash is compared against the number published by the software supplier. If these numbers match, then you know you have an exact copy of the software and you're good to go. Uh, please see the download, uh, download page at uh, linuxcnc.org uh, for the current correct sums or hash number. Downloading large files though, you know, can be prob problematic uh, for some internet connections and browsers. Okay? To safeguard yourself from a corrupt or partial download, an application called Zsync can be installed on your system that will resume interrupted downloads and will efficiently transfer large files with small modifications. If you run a Linux system already, Zsync can be installed using your package manager or from a Debian-based system by typing, uh, you know, like sudo apt get install Zsync from the terminal. We'll cover this more later. For the Microsoft Windows users, there's support of Zsync uh, as a console application available from assembly.com. You'll see the uh, link here on the screen. Instructions for installing Zsync on a Mac can be found at macappstore.org slash Zsync. Downloading the ISO with Zsync can be done with the following command and terminal. Simply just type Zsync and the URL to uh, the to the uh, file that you want to download with a .zsync on the end. So it would be zsync, you know, http colon, you know, www.linux.org slash linuxcnc-2.7 wheezy.iso.zsync. Uh, if you like to use zsync method to download, then checking the sum becomes unnecessary because the zsync program uh, will validate, uh, do the validation checking for you. Um, downloading and checking these sums will be covered uh, in detail in later uh, later videos when I cover you know Linux and and Windows uh, actually getting this software. So with the ISO downloaded, uh, it has to be copied to some bootable media such as a thumb drive or a CD or DVD ROM. Uh, the process of creating a bootable CD or thumb drive differs depending on the operating system you're using. You know, burning a CD a bootable CD is probably the easiest and can be done with your favorite CD burning software as long as you have the option to burn a disk image. Creating bootable thumb drive, you know, that's a little more involved and usually calls for a separate program to, you know, to make it happen. Uh, you may want to do this if your computer that you plan on to use as a controller doesn't have a CD-ROM. For most users, I would just recommend burning the CD-ROM to an image, uh, the disk image to a CD or DVD, you know, uh, if the computer you plan on using the controller has a ROM installed. Uh, we will later use this image to install Linux CNC on a dedicated computer. So when you complete this step, set, set, set your CD aside in a safe place. Uh, if you've never done this before, don't worry. I'll cover the process in another video covering it all step by step. There are lots of resources available to those you know, who wish to learn more about Linux CNC. It's options, supported hardware and configuration. Some of these include the following. The Linux CNC document uh, documentation found at linuxcnc.org slash docs. Uh, the documentation part of the Linux CNC website carries docs for the current stable release, the development version, and older versions of the software. You can either read them online or download PDF versions for offline viewing. Additionally, when Linux CNC is installed, a copy of the documentation for that version will be installed on the controller computer as well. The Linux CNC wiki can be found at wiki.linuxcnc.org slash, well, the URL is on the screen. Uh, the wiki has been described as a bit like the Wild West and is a bit freeform. The wiki can be read or added to by anyone on the internet. This is a good place to look at because you'll find information that is posted there that's not included in the released standardized documentation. Linux CNC also hosts forums located at forum.linuxcnc.org. Uh, these forms are di uh, divided into categories to help keep topics separated. If you have questions, this is a great place to search, um, you know, if someone else asks something or similar, or for you to ask your own questions. In addition to the above resources, Linux CNC has a channel on the IRC, 
which stands for Internet Relay Chat, that can be used to chat with other users on the controller, you know, of the controller software. It's been my experience that the people who frequent the IRC channel are willing to help, but please, please do your part when asking a question as, as specific as your circumstances are as you can. And it just makes everything, uh, you know, make everyone, you know, just makes everybody's life easier. So you know, when you when you ask, you know, make sure you include what version of the Linux CNC you're using, some about your setup, and that sort of stuff. Uh, finally, there's a couple of mailing lists available that you can uh, email questions, uh, answer other people's questions, and just general talk about CNC. Uh, first, there's a general users mailing list. Uh, and then another mailing list that is primarily used by developers. Lurking on this list sometimes yields great information about what the developers are working on and some of the features that you might see in some future releases. The developers mailing list can be found by the link that I've provided on the screen. As you see, there's lots of resources available uh, You know, if you like to learn uh, to use and integrate Linux CNC in your home shop. So where do we go from here? Well, in, the, in future videos, I'll show you um, uh, how to download, create the uh, bootable media, uh, and check uh, checksums uh, in Linux and Windows. And I'm hoping to find a volunteer that will do that. Uh, <clears throat> will do that uh, for me or for us, I should say, uh, in the Mac environment. So that, uh, since I don't have one, uh, you know, maybe uh, you know, just helping making you know, just to help make something from nothing, maybe. You know, but anyway, um, as these videos progress, hopefully, you know, I'll get enough information out there to you where you can uh, get a good grasp of the controller software, and we'll delve into uh, installation, and we'll also talk about um, uh, different uh, forms of I/O and hardware and that sort of stuff. But you know, I just want to do this in small, digest digestible chunks at a time. So thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. Um, if it's help, um, uh, um, please like, subscribe, and, sh and uh, share, uh, and tell your friends. So other than that, have a blessed day.